Hello everyone and welcome to week 3 unit 5. I am rather glad to see that you are back for this course. So let us learn all about field service and repair today. Field service and repair is a logical step in the transformative journey of how companies work with customers and generate revenue. In the past, a manufacturing company likely focused on the sale of its products as a standalone offering. In today's world, however, field service and repair is becoming an increasingly competitive and profitable industry. The after-sales strategy is no longer relegated to the back burner and is being viewed as a strong contender to meet market, market capitalization. To accomplish this, companies must find ways to eliminate field service inefficiencies, manage workforce utilization, and decrease response time. To deliver better service, field technicians need immediate access to critical information. Before we get into the process flow of the repair scenario, I would like to talk about a few critical terms that are of interest. The location of service provision indicates the location at which a service is performed. It could be either on-site, own service center or supplier service center. In on-site, the technician travels to the customer's site to service the equipment. In the case of own service center, the equipment is brought into the company's premise and serviced in their own in-house service center. Supplier service center implies that the equipment is serviced not at the company's premise but instead at the site of an external supplier. Customers often buy products from a company and occasionally these products could get damaged. Warranties on these products help in identifying whether the damaged good can be repaired or replaced by the company and what charges, if any, are to be levied for the repair of this product. Business by Design has a built-in warranty management system to aid this very process. Service Category Catalog is a structured list of categories that classifies issues related to a particular service aspect. Common service issue categories include defect or damage descriptions or cause analysis. It helps in reporting and benchmarking as well as effectively searching for knowledge base to help with customer issues. Service level is an agreement with the customer that defines the time when the customer must be contacted or the service must be completed. These service levels are used to specify the performance objectives for the delivery of service to the customers and based on it, the quality of the delivered service can be measured. Service levels ensure that adequate levels of service are delivered to all customers in accordance with business priorities and a competitive cost model. The process flow in the field service and repair scenario consists of four steps. The order, assign, resolve and the settle phase. The order and assign phase involves the creation, planning, dispatching and release of the service order by a service planner and dispatcher. Thereafter, the service performer performs the service and captures the details of the job done in a service confirmation document. Once the confirmation is released, an invoice is generated and sent to the customer. The system ensures the flow of information to financials to track cost and revenue. As a follow-up of a... Uh, sorry. Let's uh, switch to our demo now. Um, it is possible to create a service order uh, with three different methods. You, it could be um, as a follow-up of a service request. Um, I am already in the service request OW. So if there is a service request here, I can directly go and create a service order. Or it is also possible to create it as a follow-up of a service quote. So I have a quote. I've probably already negotiated the price um, of the service to be provided and then I could create a service order as a follow-up. Uh, for our demo uh, purpose, I will try to create a new service order. So let us use our favorite customer, luxury heating and cooling. You will notice that the location of service provision has been defaulted as on-site which implies that the service performer has to travel to the customer's location to service the product. If I change over to own service center, you see that automatically the service center's address is defaulted here. Let us for our demo purpose go with on-site. Uh, in the registered product, you could also um, already provide which is the customer's product that will be serviced right here. If there is warranty information being maintained in the registered product, uh, product master data, this will also be fetched. 
there is a service category which can uh, help the service performer when he looks at the service order to determine what potentially could be the problem. Therefore, it helps to sort of give these incident categories and the service categories right here. You notice that there are dates such as initial response, arrival at customer, completion by. These are mostly used in analytics to really determine how the company is performing vis-a-vis -vis the service um, as well as individual service performer metrics. Let me now go to the service and spare part uh, tab here. And let's say the customer wanted a gas boiler installation. As a planner, I could already determine how many hours it could potentially take and put in the quantities here. You will notice that the service performer, uh, Jack Ingersoll, has been defaulted here, who is an internal, which means um, Almica's own uh, employee. Let me now release this to service execution. So we have an order 1044. Now let me just switch over to the uh, Jack Ingersoll's view. Now you will see that there is a field service and repair work center where there is something called as an order pipeline. Let me just refresh it. And you will see that Jack has a view of all the service orders that are created for him, as well as that of his team. So let's assume that Jack goes in, installs the boiler, and now wants to confirm the um, actuals that he has put in. He will do a confirm execution. And let me just do a view all. Now you will notice that the line item that was created here has a reference of the service order, which implies that this is the planned item that was created. Jack might also want to put in travel expenses that he incurred while getting to the customer side. So let me just put that and say it took him about an hour. Right here you see there is no reference to the service order item. This implies that this line item is an unplanned service. Now if his work is done, he will do a release with order completion. So we have 1180 and you will see if I go to customer invoicing, invoice request, that we have 1180 right here which is available uh, to be invoiced to the customer. So now that we've seen this demo, let's go over to the slides. In this unit, we explored the field service and repair scenario, learned how planning can be done using service orders and how service confirmations can be used to track the process of executing services. Thank you for joining and hope to see you again in Unit 6.